Uh, all right. Thanks for staying with us. Now, Nigeria is experiencing foreign exchange crisis as FX scarcity drives up the cost of exchanging Naira into U.S. dollars, particularly in the parallel market. Now, according to Naira metrics, the continuous depreciation of the Naira to the dollar has um, generated lots of um, talking points from financial analysts, economists, and individuals from all walks of life. Now, the rapid decline has led to forecasts that the Naira could fall to a thousand Naira to a dollar if urgent measures are not taken. Although CBN, that's the Central Bank of Nigeria, is working to halt the baleful consequences such as free fall um, in danger, the measures have not been as effective as, it, as intended. Some of the measures applied by the CBN include stopping the sale of Forex by Bureau de Change operators in 2020, um, 2021, um, selling only to commercial banks in a bid to stop the fall of the Naira. However, earlier in the year, the CBN also announced it will stop the sale of commercial um, of uh, FX to commercial banks at the end of 2022. Now, the Apex Bank also banned Aboki FX, an online platform Form which publishes um, the unofficial rates of the Naira to other currencies. Despite these measures, scarcity persists, and either directly or indirectly, we are all feeling the impact and the scarcity of FX as it threads across the um, different sectors of the Nigerian economy. So how has FX, right, scarcity, impacted you? That's the question we're asking today. Now, please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation, send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 81 803 You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfco1 with the hashtag WayShow. <sighs> so, let me adjust for this matter. <laughs> because this is actually very tough to mm. discuss. Because you know how sometimes, because some of these things, we do not break it down to tiny bits, like the way the onion, onion. peel... You take it layer by layer. You really I do not understand. When people are saying, oh, yes, you don't understand the impact. So perhaps let me attempt, you know, to share a few that I know of. Earlier, I think in about two months ago, my sister called me. Somebody was desperately looking for, um, um, I think about $10,000. She wanted to go to school. It was nowhere to be found. In fact, I've not even asked her how far that search has gone i called everybody that i knew nobody could help why oh, it's not available in fact there's no even like and eh, let me see what i can do it is not available a lot of things you can't transactions you can't do online like you used to before i know the hassle i had to go through getting to register my kids on an online platform where they learn um, something around programming and computer you know i had to go and source do so now Anybody that say, oh, I take this $100, take this $200, I know they change, <laughs> you know, I just keep it, I, I, I pay it into the dollar card because at least I know that there will be something to be able to pay for little, little things. I mean, that is just me. We've not even talked about um, how people are unable to do any meaningful business transactions like they used to before, you know. It is, I don't know. The impact of FX scarcity is beyond even anything anybody can say right now because so many things, the, the issues we have even locally in the aviation sector when we were having challenges with flights and all of that is all tied to the FX. So how do we even, you know, how do we even start? I do not even know where we're going to start from. But let me hear your thoughts, Uti, because you had even a, an interesting story around mm. FX, you know. <laughs> let me hear your thoughts. You know, we are in August. We're approaching September, we're yeah. approaching the start of the school year. It's not looking good, right? So just to give some context, this has been a problem. It's not a new problem. It's just a problem that is getting worse over time. Uh, first and foremost, where do we find ourselves today? We find ourselves an economy and a country hugely dependent on foreign currency, mm -hmm. to which we do not have many sources to generate it. So. Oil remains our primary export. We are, I think it accounts for about 90% mm -hmm. of our FX income. And when you look at that, right, you might look at the price of oil today and the fact that OPEC just increased the amount of oil that we can um, uh, export 
yeah, I think yeah. it was 1.8 million barrels. Um, you took on the story, yes. Yeah, so on the surface of it, it should be good news because it means that Nigeria is earning more. So why do we then have an FX problem? One, the sector itself that is the source of our income, which is the it's oil also sector, a problem. is first of all, compounded and suffering from the effect of years of lack of investment, of lack of improvement. So the degradation added on top of that, the theft and the bunkering, means that we're losing a significant portion of what should be our income to all of those activities. Now, when we come to the one that we are now actually earning money on, the increase in the cost of the raw material, which is crude, also increases the cost of the refined product, mm. which we unfortunately do not refine locally. So, when the raw material gets more expensive, <laughs> the, re the refined product, which we then import, gets more expensive. So, as we earn more with yeah, one hand, with hand. <laughs> we spend more with the other hand. Mm. So, we're losing, what is it, the spend, they're saying four, four trillion by the end of the year, I suspect it will be much higher in subsidy. Now, this permeates everything that we do because infrastructurally, we're suffering. Mm. So everything is either affected by the cost of petrol or the cost of diesel. Take your pick, what's your poison? Mm. So we find ourselves, that's on the income side. Mm. We haven't diversified our economy. Nothing we brings are, Forex to us. We have about 205 products that we export mm. against an African average of about 254. So even as the most populous economic center, blah, 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 we're not even meeting the threshold of what we should be able to export. And that's even the African threshold. Mm -hmm. If you think about the resources, the richness in this country, where I believe it is about 36% of the arable land in Africa is in Nigeria mm. for planting. So you, I mean, when the president was shouting agri, agri, farm, farm, he wasn't crazy, but you know what we were saying. There are opportunities. But let's now even look at agriculture because you wonder to yourself, okay, cucumber is not uh, <laughs> imported now. Carrot is not imported. Why is everything going up? You cannot turn to agriculture because insecurity means you can't farm. <laughs> so today, when plantain is 8,000 naira, you're like, whoops, for supply and specified. demand. Specified. For four pieces. For four pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Not a bunch. Do you know? So you realize that even locally, production is, is now affected. Mm. So the ability to even diversify, there's a problem. Mm. Remember I said there was not much good news. So you come to that. Let me even add to agriculture. Mm. Apart from even that insecurity, what you plant, your seedlings, your fertilizers, your chemicals to take away pesticides are all imported. So all of those things are import also, dependent. No, so I'm there like, is nowhere. We are coming to manufacturing. <laughs> so you have taken away agriculture, which is where you should be able to diversify. Over the years, we've seen the CBN and the government try to find ways to stop this bleeding. Buy Nigeria to grow Nigeria. synonymous to mm -hmm. grow Nigeria. But guess what? Whatever you are buying by Nigeria, the raw materials come from outside is imported thank you so we as a retailing let me put it from the perspective of a retailer nigeria is a retail dream 200 million people largely youth they population. don't have nothing just be giving so, them you know fmcg they should be making money hand over fist mm. but this is a place where by the time you add in security, add rising cost of increase in, um, in uh, rising cost of operations, you add uh, affecting the distribution networks between insecurity and again the cost of diesel. Like you just get to the market one day and noodles. Do you remember the day we were talking about when the Ukraine war started? Yeah. yeah. And I remember LC Trouble said, "How does it concern? How does it concern me? Uh, yeah, it don't concern me. Oh." By the way, yeah, your no, wheat no. is now. It comes <laughs> from there. That's how your bread is now one thousand one hundred naira. Yeah. So. It, I mean, it's just unending. Hmm. Now, what has the government tried to do? Hmm. They've, between, at least, let me say, January of 2016, because that's when they started reducing the sale to BDCs, to the whole stopping of sale to BDCs in, was it 2020 or 2021? Down to wanting to do this, their RT200 FX program, let's try and raise from imports, exports. It's gloom. 
because today we have simply gotten to a point where supply does not meet demand. Mm. And the real thing that the CBN, in my opinion, needs to do, and in the opinion of a lot of people, you can't be selling somewhere at 400 naira and be defending, but you don't have enough. Mm. So people need to go and sell. So when you don't have enough, the one that is available, law of supply and demand, it pushes. So the fact is, today people are losing school admi uh, admissions. Hmm. People are getting kicked out of school. People, dare I say, are dying because they can't pay medical bills. Like, it's just, even production is almost halting. Some companies, I think it was two airlines that shut down within the last few months. Hmm. I'm not sure whether they've reopened. Hmm. But this thing has far reaching. I mean, I remember the good old days where you could rock up to the airport and buy a ticket to Uber or something for like 20,000. Now we're talking 75, talking When I'm not flying to Ghana, <laughs> even Ghana even was 40k. Ghana was you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like, let's even just say, when I'm not flying to Ghana, if you are spending 100k to Ghana, you are buying a business class ticket. Flying to Ghana is no longer the, I mean, the case. I still remember buying a ticket to the UK for 150,000. So, oh, yours was 150, mine was 120. Uh -huh. So today, <laughs> Guys, I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah. everything in this country depends on FX. Wow. I wish I could find something that doesn't because if the thing doesn't depend on FX directly, it depends on it indirectly because everything raw depends on fuel. Absolutely. Let's even leave raw materials. If you are going to enter transport. Hmm. So it, something in that, that value chain must be transported. FX is your problem. On that note. On <laughs> Mm. It is uh, it is a very bitter pill to swallow the state of our the impact of FX scarcity on our economy. Mm. Like Uti rightly said, it has affected every facet of our economy, whether directly or indirectly. I mean, she has really, really elaborated on all of them. I just want to highlight a few things. The rising FS, I mean, you raised the issue of insecurity and it's part of it. All of these things that are happening in Nigeria have also created that demand indirectly and has created this, this uh, monster that we're having to deal with today. When you talk about trade, trade is the life wire of any economy and our economy is heavily dependent on import in everything that we do domestic international we had mentioned uh, the raw materials that we need all of these things cannot be sourced here we still have to deal with them from outside the country and then those you mentioned uh, earlier and uh, uti also mentioned it in her story about uh, emirates uh, closing that chapter with us. We have a lot of people who commercial uh, people who trade mm -hmm. in the UAE. Okay. With this blockade, so to speak, it has halted commerce in the country and it's going to affect us all ultimately. A lot of those traders, it is what the, the funds that have continued to circulate in the economy with that closure is going to affect the economy hmm. in a in, in in a very serious or a very high high note we have um, people who are resuming schools i mean if you hear some of the school fees at by the time you benchmark it with the dollar rate today you can't even believe if they tell you that this is the school fee, a lot of students are going to be going back to school. Mm. Some of them, I have friends whose kids are stuck. They're just waiting in the queues, just waiting for the opportunity. There's no forex to buy. And with this, children cannot further education. It's bad enough that the education system in Nigeria is already, Comatic. is almost extinct, right? And then the opportunities that they have to go outside for those that even literally struggled to put funds together to be able to raise funds to send their children out as another or the only other option. And then that avenue is being blocked again. 
it's it's very very disheartening i have i have you know conversations with people and they're like we don't know if cbn itself does not know they don't have the funds to mm. circulate what is going to happen to individuals what mm. is going to happen to families what is going to happen to communities we also have um uh Hmm. Fuel importation, if I would just touch on that a little bit. The imports, we spend more on importation than we are. We're not refining anything. We're producing. And I don't we know they produce nothing. It's, it's, it's really, really <laughs> sad that That's even our leaders <laughs> have not seen how impactful this has been with all that is going on. And it is the layman. It is back to the Nigerian citizen. So, so this is actually tiring to discuss. Why I say it's tiring is because you have, on one hand, you have refused to resolve the issues. Because let me even focus on education for a bit. Because I know that a lot of people that are in high demand for FX right now, individuals, not businesses, mm -hmm. they are mainly going abroad to go and study. Some of them want to go and continue their studies abroad. Some of them are going to pick up a, a, a second degree abroad. Most of them are looking to buy Forex at the CBN rate because that's the only way it's going to be affordable to make sense to their education, right? You haven't provided those funds, yet you have also allowed the schools to remain shut. You know, if we continue the way we are going, because there is nothing you touch today. I was in the supermarket the other day and I wanted mm -hmm. to pick up just a few items, Uti. I was wondering, please, what did I buy? Yep. Because every single the, thing the that is on that shelf is literally worthless. Every single thing on that shelf is even down to water. There's no Forex that is I... affecting it. Like, dollar is affecting every single item that we consume or we use in this country. You see, so... If the government is not even looking in the direction of fixing the problem, where do we even go from here? Because right now, the option before was, oh, everybody um, source for your, uh, fend for yourself, blah, 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 which is what people started doing. People just started, you know what, well, let's forget about government and let's just start sorting ourselves out. Now, you buy a property today, you know, maybe you convert your dollar. Somebody was telling me about how, um, I think he had some dollars or something and, and changed it to Naira. On that, was it 24 hours, hours lost. or 48 hours? <laughs> he lost value. He said, in fact, he kept on saying, ah, maybe it was going to be. On that 24 hours, Uti, he lost almost, I think, about 40 naira on each of that um, dollar. That because when he had to buy it back. Mm. The dollar I gave you at okay, at 10 p.m. in the night yesterday. Please return it back to me, no. 7 a.m. in the morning. He said, it's not even available. He said, but hold on, maybe later in the evening. By the time he called him in the evening, it was almost 15 naira. I think it was 15 yeah. Now, that's what's happening. I mean, if you, know? you, if you even look at real estate, most people will say that the devaluation of the naira favors the people who are earning FX, who say, for instance, are abroad, can still afford to invest in real estate. But... On the flip side, when you reinvest in real estate, what is it? It's an investment. You're not living in it. So you're going to rent it out. Now, so you're rent it out in when Naira. you rent it out in Naira, when you compare that you to the value. dollar, you're to the, value. to the investment you made. Because the ROI on your investment, you made the investment at a certain rate, and then the income is in Naira, and the rate is dropping. Hmm. So you find that even... The people who, because it's so easy now. I mean, even I have said it in past. Like, ah, people that are any dollar now, man, they're really. But the truth is, wherever you're spending if it, you're going to you're spend still, it. You're going to lose value. You're still losing value. So unless you're able to make, you know, real like long-term investments, you're right now. It's it's touching everybody. So, you know, when we think about it, I remember at one point we all used to be able to spend. I think it was like five hundred dollars or two hundred dollars a month on your naira cards. Today is $20. Mm. That is if you can. Mm. It's $20. Now, I mean, that $20 is really like, okay, she will be able to watch uh, streaming services. That's really all that is for really? because there's nothing else you can really pay for Absolutely. with that money. Mm. So we find that it's not that the government isn't doing anything because mm. they have been trying. Like I said, January 2016 was when they 
I, that I remember was when they reduced the, the amount they were selling to BDCs. Um, they introduced that RT200 program where I think there was the program where they said, you know, we'll give you five naira for every import, every mm -hmm. dollar. But now let's look at that solution. You want to give five naira. When the disparity between your window and the parallel market is like 300 naira. They Am I crazy? with you. Let's go on a break. <laughs> when we come back from the break, we'll open our whole life. Stay with us. <laughs> All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, if you just tuned in, it's our ladies' night out, and we're discussing the impact of FX scarcity, right? Please, let's hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join the conversation. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-8463. You can also tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. I mean, um, our phone line is now open. The number to call is 70 That's the number to call. Um, Uti shared, showed me a very disheartening email that she received from a friend of hers that just lost the admission into a, part a particular university in the UK because of the inability to pay for um, the fees. And to meet up with deadline. Meet up with the deadline. So, you see, when we bring it home to that, Nobody really wants to spend money. We're not going abroad to study because we just feel like going abroad that's, to study. That's, that's, that's the, the only truth. option we have. That's the truth. I mean, the reason I actually told my children to start learning, um, what's it called, the okay. online courses, the computer courses online, is because I do, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to put myself maybe two years from now. Because I've heard, I've heard a lot of my friends say that it's been difficult paying, because they have older children, it's been difficult paying school fees. So what I told my children, learn this skill so that you can get a remote job. Do you understand? That remote job, at Have least should be able to... You it should earn you good money. I mean, money I looked at the salary range before, I, before we, we chose the specific one for them to study. At least that one, you'll be able to earn money while you're schooling. So whether money is able to come to you or not you should be able you to at least to sustain this. yourself mm. in school and have your you know fees and all of those things sorted because right that's the only option that is even when you are now lucky enough that you've been able to even get there you understand so it is just too much like i don't understand how the nigerian government how they look at the citizens and they're able to sleep at night okay yesterday there was a total blackout right where people's electricity was cut off because this um, a, a company said they wanted to go on strike because of unpaid salaries right now i am suffering power i am suffering food inflation i'm suffering bad um, infrastructure i'm suffering even if okay so let me even try to get out of this and go you know it is so bad but let me take our first caller for the evening youngest old man hello you should give us small hope hi no man, you are in this day, man. You want, you want to be a shame, buddy. Responsibilities are increasing, and the value is decreasing of the funds. You see, uh, all this one I thought just to make me very emotional. I swear, because this just the reality of what's happening. Average Nigerian is down. Even no, no matter how strong the spirit is, the soul will just be weak. Because a lot of things is going away. And at the same time, nothing is working out. In fact, it says there's a part of my language that says that provided you don't have money, you're a lazy man. Because even your ideas in the family council meeting will be looked upon as one stupid talk. But maybe you have money, if you're, if you're still everybody should pull the struggle and go and pass daughter, they will agree with you because they know you are a rich man and your advice is clear. So this situation is making us look dull. And people, well, if you want to do something, you just feel like you are tied down. Imagine that lady you said that lose her admission, look at all her class and everything. It's making me go emotional. Seriously, we need serious, serious change in the mechanism of this whole system. And the worst part is, what are going to do well? They go sit and park there. They speak on cook English for us every day. Eh? And they will make headlines. You see, they pay me rich. Hmm. But I don't try to be that and useful this time. Whether I go for Air Force. And I'm not that depend on. I'm not just believing anything they get. Everything is going, is going. Look at the market. Everything is skyrocketing. Any money you give, woman will come and say not do. See, I'm in pain, Jerry. Yeah, yeah, Paleo. 
<laughs> so I'm in pain. Uh, Let's take some so, comments, yeah. yeah. Okay, I have this one. Um, I have this one from Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy in Jalingo. He says, Nigeria is on autopilot. Let's not shy away from that. No production, no farming, only consumption. We now depend on foreign currency and it has shut down our Naira. I still have the tickets my dad bought for me from Kano to Yola in 1980, Nigerian Airways. It was 11 Naira. Guess what? Emirates will stop flying Nigeria from 1st of September. Okay, we already know. We don't refine, we only export our crude and import what we consume. It's a shame and very pathetic. Our leaders should be ashamed of themselves. <laughs> okay, I can't uh, because he he reigned a curse on okay, so our let's, leaders. Let's so take I'll just Loma. take that. Skip that. Yeah. Thank you, Bobby Kennedy. Let's take Loma from Abia State. Then I'll come back to the messages. Good evening. Hi, Loma. Good evening, my dear. Uh, I'm looking at the screen. The impact of the effect that uh, I'm telling you, let me just tell you my own life story. It has caused problems between me and my wife. The impact is so much that I have never wanted to go to the market. He told me you are good for yourself. You must go to the market and buy things for yourself. It's because of the impact. Everything in the market, everything in the market has skyrocketed. And what is, what I'm asking you for the best? The Minister of Finance, does it mean that these people didn't understand what economy is all about? These two people. Because these are the people that have really dealt with us. They continue bringing us policy to make the dollar, to again, to have the dollar to be stable. At the end of the day, everything will happen. So, what? What I'm just asking is the CDN government. Does it mean that he, 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 uh, he did not study about the economy well before he took up the region? Hmm. Or the minister for finance did not study well before they gave him that uh, 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 position? These people have really destroyed the economy. And our president, he is a military man, he doesn't look into that area. And the impact is making us, you know, our children cannot go to school again. You go to look for a food and put it in there. At the end of the day, they will come out without achieving the desired results. Thank you. Thank you, Loma. You know, we've, we've never even touched it's, on medicals. No, we've not, no like I like, said, I mean, Uti, Uti just breeze through it. But you can imagine <laughs> oh, the number of people that, ca that are trying to go for certain kinds of surgeries. Of things anymore. No, it doesn't because, I mean, from a volume perspective, with the amount of jackpa that we're seeing there's school fees is at every level is at the top you still got pta bta people who are trying to buy that for travel um so everything in that invincible category or invisible category rather is a problem so when you are even talking about school fees you are talking of so from the time that the cbn introduced the automated um, from a yeah. um, platform portal. So they started off, today you are circa eight to 10 weeks before you can get that money. And it's not even guaranteed, hmm. right? Um, so and that these problem- And are tied to deadlines. Exactly, are tied to deadlines. So that problem exists. It's tied to visas, it's tied mm -hmm. to all sorts. Absolutely. So that problem exists. But that's on the individual side. Businesses have been waiting since last year. Businesses that are waiting for dollar from the official window. Some of them have been waiting since last year. So the problem is compounded. But this is because right now, the CBN is even still selling to the commercial banks. You know that based on the race to 200, the RT200 uh, policy that they've put in place. Uh, by the end looking, of 2022. By no? the end of this year, it is what you earn from import that you can then Nobody's gonna give provide. Nobody's going to give the banks anything. So at that point... Right? And this is where I still say, you can't somewhere be selling something for 400 and something. And then somewhere, somebody's buying it for 800 or 700 or 600. That disparity means it's that wherever 
whatever I am going to do to buy it at that 400, to find a way to sell. And you know Nigerians, where there's a will, there's a way. You know how they say uh, anywhere a cockroach can put his whiskers, the whole body can pass. If there is a way, Nigerians will find it. So everything in this window, let it just kill this parallel, i.e. let us the chips fall as they may and let the market stabilize. The Unfortunately, price. that might not happen because <laughs> it is beneficial for a hey, lot of no, so we know. But you see, we are going to get to a point where we don't pray to see that, but it almost means you're grinding to a halt. Our foreign reserve is, is dwindled to almost nothing. Hmm. So we are not even plugging the gaps any longer. We can't afford to do this indefinitely. And this is what we know today. Nobody expected COVID. If anything happens close to again COVID tomorrow. happens again, mm. we're gone. there's nothing now. So, <laughs> someone says the biggest reason why the value of the dollar is increasing is as a result of the USA Federal Reserve Bank. In, they increased their interest rate, which has made the dollar stronger. Hmm, really. All right. So, hello, ladies. Forex scarcity is based uh, is based in two main factors: revenue inflow and wastage. Nigeria is not exporting much in items of goods and services. The key product oil is not being exploited because we cannot meet our production quota due to insecurity, corruption, and oil bunkery. The little products that uh, brings in forex have loopholes in supply chain through the um, through which it trickles away to private pockets. This is from Ufomani also says that also we need we Nigerians need to stop. Stop which one? Is it <laughs> Is it us that is stealing the products? I no, they said that we should not buy. Mm. We should stop. We should not buy imported things. Imported things. Yeah, what, what do we buy, eat? What, what, what they buy Nigerian God, is based on imported My, raw materials. Nigerian, even the Nigerian uh, 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 products are not even available. A lot of their raw materials. So are that's what she's saying. Are got them from outside. So how does that? Happen? Let's shall just be taking comments. We have a very long one. I have two here. Okay. So the first one okay. is from Bissy. And Bissy says, good evening, ladies. The impact of forest scarcity has been so bad, I can no, lo no longer order for things online, which I used to do by myself without any hassle. I'm almost at the verge of losing an admission, which I thought I could have easily paid for. The school has called me several thousand times, but there's nothing I can do. When this government refused sacking the CBN governor, when he started playing politics instead of being a true professional, we were promised refinery will work, but nothing has been done. It's really painful that there is no headway yet. Wow, so sorry um, to hear that, BCO. Mm. Really, I'm you know, so that's the real, real sad realities, right? Um, there's no name to this one, and I'm going to try and summarize you it. You know, while you're summarizing that, let me quickly take Austin from Benin because that's okay. a very lengthy message. You need to read it and digest it. Austin, your life. <laughs> yeah, good evening. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you, if you can recall, between January, just before the president traveled in January 2017 for medical. Uh, in London, the dollar, the, the naira was already above 500. I think it was around 506 naira. Oh, wow. They worked very hard, and between January and March, in less than three months, they were able to bring back that value to around 300. Uh, Austin, if you can try to call back, the line is a bit muffled, sorry. I think he was trying to talk about when the president left, and I think when the vice president took over, the price of the dollar, the came, of the dollar came, down. came down. Yeah. Well, let's, let's take more comments. Okay, this one is from Chisum. It's very brief. It is very simple. FX is foreign exchange, an exchange for any foreign external transaction. Except we are self-sufficient, we will forever need FX. If we increase locals, we'll reduce FX dependency. It's sad in Nigeria. I think the country should go on a quick holiday. Absolutely. But there's no, there's to nobody, where? there's no country, right? You can't be self-sustainable. You're not an island. There's no country that does not import. There's no country that does not export. The idea is you plug your leakages and your wastages. You do what you can internally to stimulate the economy and make sure that your, even the it's quality of your environment. Yeah, exactly. Because even if we had a 
good market for local products. You still wouldn't be able to stop me from buying an import, imported product. It's a matter of choice. Mm -hmm. um, and that in itself stimulates the economy. So there's nothing like being self-sustainable and saying we won't import. Mm. It's not the way it works. Um, I'll quickly try and summarize this. The, the person first says um, the fact that the, the president has been begged several times to let the to change the service chiefs so he's not surprised that the cbn governor has also not been changed um the fact that nigerians have to be patriotic uh that the bdc's themselves are part of the problem and those people are nigerian so if you are causing speculation then you're part of the problem um as well so um we are i'll just read the last part of the message it says our, our illusion is not appreciating what's ours and trying to live abroad while in nigeria is why we import rather than produce unless we keep producing and patronizing made in nigeria the naira will have no relevance to trade remember how some private schools charge in dollars or how even business people feel good because they have dumb accounts we call it hedging she who did this to us <laughs> now who do who Raphael from Zaria says devaluation of currency help countries that are into production and exportation. But we are a country that specializes in consumption, consumption only. <laughs> Toothpicks, matches, ETC are made in China and we expect a better economy. Haba. Haba, Madanla. Mm. On that note, what are your parting words? What should we do? Is there is there is there any way we can we can rise above this? Well, first of all, like I said, that window needs to be closed. You can't have that much of a disparity. Um, it will continue. One, you are spending money to defend it. Um, two, people will be capitalizing on that money you're spending and then putting it in their own pockets, which fuels corruption, fuels all the problems that we're talking about. So, that is what the first thing that we need to do. A lot of our monetary and fiscal policies really don't help us. Like, I, I'm, no, I'm not an economist, I'm not an expert, but to me, the average layman, it seems like we're in the, in the days of trial and error. Let's see if this will work, let's see if that. And, and there's nothing wrong with honest failure. We all do it in our businesses, right? You try something, if it doesn't work, that's how innovation is born. But this is a problem compounded, not just by the monetary and fiscal policies, but by the fact that the lack of investment in our infrastructure, the lack of investment in education, all of those things have all now come home to roost and we're feeling it. No, ma. I think uh, we need to look inwards. I agree with Uti. It, there's a lot that can be done if we actually tell ourselves the truth as a nation and if our leaders are empathetic towards the plight of the people. At the end of the day, it's the people that are going to suffer all of this. So if they can look inwards and see how we can plug in on all fronts, where we can begin to create that opportunity for our economy to rise above this i mean there's so much that they can do even by themselves not even in terms of policies in terms of even uh, restructuring basically i think this can be taken care of if there's a lot of insensitivity going on there's a lot of um, inconsideration and uh, greed going on as well so if we can look beyond that i think we can we can start making headway somehow. Okay, so uh, just some followed up that comment. It says, so when you are self-sufficient on locals, you can export and earn FX that will sort out demand and supply naturally. Locals is very, very key. Thank you, Chisom. I was going to say that while we are waiting for the economy to normalize, do what some of us are doing find means to start to get remote jobs that's the beautiful thing about how the internet has has helped a lot of people i know people right now living in nigeria they're earning in dollars they're not earning in naira because they have remote jobs they're working they're living in nigeria but they're working mm -hmm. abroad because that's the only way you can you can strengthen your personal finance for the people that are going to school i really empathize with you because i really don't even know how to even say, okay, this is going to get better because a lot of people have actually lost their admissions. We don't know how, maybe we'll start to, maybe start up a sign up letter to start writing to the, to the international so, committees to please be patient with those students. That's the only thing I can say because I really don't know what we can do about that. But it's a business. Uh, yeah, yeah I mean, must go on. The absolutely. Economy but we are, is not well, the only one affected. Time. <laughs> and but the, thank you, ladies. The, I think the sad part about it with the education part is that even in spending so much of our, of our currency to educate these people, 
those skills are not coming back to Nigeria. Thank so you. The only thing that we can leverage there is the remittances that those people will now when bring they get back. Yeah. Come. Thank you, ladies. All right. So follow us on social media. Like, share, invite your families and friends to watch and follow the conversation. Now, if you missed today's quote, today's quote, today's quote, here it is again. Somebody is sleeping on my prompter. <laughs> no complaint is more common than that of scarcity of money. This is from Adam Smith. We'll see you guys live at 8 p.m. Tomorrow is Friday. Yeah. Where I, I need a break. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs>